welcome back once again to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now today we have a very special guest. His name is Andrew Middleton and he's the Managing Director at British Gas Zero, which is an enterprise that is spearheading the race to net carbon emissions. And ultimately, British Gas Zero is aiming to play an integral role in installing, managing and supporting everything from electronic vehicle chargers, heat pumps, smart home technology, across not only the public sector, but the private sector too. And their mission seems quite clear, to create a future where technology supports a decarbonised world, makes homes more energy efficient, and helps consumers reduce their carbon footprint. So I've invited him on the podcast today to share his thoughts on how technology is already beginning to, to shape our path towards a greener future, and also explore the importance of energy-efficient homes, the steps we might need to take to help reduce emissions, and also the role of the public perception in reaching our net zero goal here in the UK. So when we add all that, combined with the UK government's recent announcement of a new Department of Energy Security, and the heightened focus on the UK's commitment to achieving net zero emissions by 2050. This is a conversation I don't think anyone will want to miss. Uh, No matter which side of the fence you're on, I think there's going to be something for everyone. So buckle up and hold on tight, because it's time for me to beam your ears all the way to the UK, where together we can venture into this thought-provoking discussion. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Andrew. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me, Neil. My name's Andrew Middleton, and I'm the Managing Director of British Gas Zero. So to begin the podcast today, can you tell everyone listening exactly what British Gas Zero is and what aims you're you're trying to accomplish? Yeah, absolutely. So British Gas is the UK's largest energy supplier, and British Gas Zero is a new business unit within, within the British Gas family, which has been established to accelerate the role that British Gas is playing in the UK's energy transition. Our mission is is simply to help increasing numbers of consumers lower their household energy bills whilst at the same time reducing their carbon emissions. British Gas has been on hand to support the UK through every major energy transition to date, from the introduction of gas lamps in London over 200 years ago to the rollout of the gas network more recently. And we're determined to play a similar role as we embark on the next great change in, in how we heat and power our homes. And it's such a big topic right now, not just the, the energy prices there, but also sustainability and heading to war, to towards a more decarbonised future. So as this is a tech podcast, though, how is technology supporting a, a decarbonised future for UK homes? And can you possibly bring that to life with maybe a few examples of the technologies or products that you're currently working with? Yeah, absolutely. And there is a huge amount of focus in, you know, in the media, for example, at the moment on on some of the kind of technologies that are gaining traction as we electrify more homes. So that's things like heat pumps, it's things like solar panels and EV chargers. The reality is lots of this physical kit is actually pretty well established. I think the key is really in helping demystify these products for the average consumer. And that's where our home health check comes in. This is a new product we've launched reasonably recently where we're providing consumers with the most comprehensive energy check that's available on the market. So what we do is we provide a 90-minute in-home consultation that provides customers with a personalized action plan to help homeowners decarbonize their home and reduce their energy bills. We give them a full report, which includes things like radiator efficiency. It uses thermal imagery to show where heat is escaping. It also advises where customers can access government support or or grants and those sorts of things. Now, I think this is a really good example where we use some smart tech, but we also combine it with expert in-person advice to really help consumers gain confidence in how they can take steps towards net zero. In terms of some of the kind of technology, the products that I mentioned, you know, solar installations, that's a new product for us at, at British Gas. We've just started offering free home consultations for solar panel installations. And and actually increasingly we're seeing customers choosing to install a battery as well. And so, you know, what we're doing there is is really looking at customers' energy usage. We're looking at their home, how many people live there, how they consume energy. And we provide them with with a survey which gives estimated costs, give them savings and and different installation options. What we're seeing is actually customers can save up to to 90% on their electricity costs as a result of a 
solar and battery installation. When it comes to EV charging, we've just launched a new EV charger, the Hive EV charger, which is one of the smallest chargers in the market and critically connects into the, the kind of best in class Hive platform and app. There are almost 2 million households in the UK now using the Hive platform, which is a smart, smart thermostat and controls kind of ecosystem. And by connecting our EV charger in there, we're able to offer British Gas Energy customers a new smart charge service, which helps them charge off peak and get rewarded for, for charging their car in a, a cheaper and greener way. What we found in trials is, is EV customers using the smart charge service can save around 20% from their electricity bills. And certainly when we see you know people making major lifestyle choices like moving from a internal combustion engine car to a, an electric vehicle you do see kind of there's a different kind of bill shock in terms of like moving from paying for you know your petrol the petrol station to having your energy bill at home going up and so all of these sorts of steps i think will, will make a really big difference to consumers as we as we move forward with with these new technologies Absolutely. And as we look towards the future, the adoption of electronic vehicles is just going to increase. So it's interesting you mentioned a big figure there, 90% saving or up to 90% saving. And of course, combine that with the UK government's renewed focus over here on reaching net zero by 2050. What role do you see British Gas Zero playing in achieving this goal? Yeah, look, lots of our focus is on the role that we can play in consumers' households, be that installing or maintaining things like the electric vehicle charge points or solar panels or heat pumps or hydrogen-ready boilers. But actually, as part of Centrica Group, our role can be even bigger than that. And so, for example, you know, we're offering skilled, well-paid jobs for our 20,000-strong team, and we are kind of continued and committed to growing that, taking on a new apprentice for every day of this decade. So that's about 3,500 apprentices coming into you know these sorts of roles through to the end of the decade i think a really critical role for us to play is as trusted advisor so you know i mentioned before but what we're actually seeing and i think it's probably reasonably typical of both the world we live in and also you know when you're going through major technology change there is a huge amount of polarization in terms of public discourse the media narrative you know you can look in one paper and heat pumps are going to serve, solve world peace and you look in another and they're, they're sort of they're the worst thing that could ever happen to the planet. The, the reality is somewhere in the middle and that's where kind of our expert engineering workforce I think plays a really critical role. So we're not here to prescribe one technology on a consumer. We're not here to you know, try and implement a one-size-fits-all fits approach. We want to help every individual customer with their own journey towards net zero by giving tailored, trusted advice. So, you know, I think that's a really important role for us to play. And actually, you know, that's potentially not a role that government can play because again, you know, different people will interpret kind of government advice, you know, from a political lens. And so, you know, again, that's where I think that that's an important thing for us to do. Again, within the wider Centrica group, our customers benefit from, from zero carbon electricity supplied from our interest in the UK nuclear fleet and things like long-term power purchase agreements with renewable elect electricity generators. And equally, we are working, it's not within the British gas element, but, but within the wider group, we are supporting large energy users, so people like the NHS, people like the defence estate to save money and reduce carbon emissions as well. So whilst we're focused on kind of helping homeowners and, and households decarbonise, the Centrica Group as a whole is looking at how we can support you know the whole energy infrastructure for the UK. And you did mention heat pumps a moment ago, and I know there'll be a lot of people listening that have read about it in the media. They've seen the emails from their energy provider, etc., and they want to do the right thing. But of course, right now, the, the rising cost of living and the thousands of pounds to install something like this can automatically make some people just put that on the back burner. So how do you aim to, to make energy efficient technology more affordable for customers? Yeah, so it's a really critical topic and, you know, it's sort of front of mind for us actually. And, and, you know, it's in our mission. You know, we want to, yes, we want to help people reduce their carbon emissions, but we also want to help them reduce their energy bills. When it comes to heat pumps, we launched our lowest price guarantee. So we, we offer heat pumps starting at £2,999 in England and Wales. 
with support from the government boiler upgrade scheme. We also have a low low price match. We'll match any quote. So we're offering customers confidence that you know you can you can get a high quality install at a great price. We've also just launched our new warm home promise, which is all about making sure that customers know we will only install a heat pump in houses where we know that it will work. And if we've installed one and it's not heating the home to the temperature that's agreed, then we're going to refund the cost of the heat pump. Um, but I do think this is an area where you know government plays a part. And so you know I mentioned the boiler upgrade scheme, which I think is you know a really important and, and welcome support for consumers. I think the Great British Insulation Scheme, which is imminently going live, will also be a be a big help, which is very much focused on, you know, reducing heat loss through insulation measures, and so so making homes more energy efficient will definitely help lower bills. And we also support consumers through things like the energy company obligation, so that helps those in fuel poverty with with insulation measures and beyond. In fact, energy efficiency measures more broadly. But I think. I think we will see quite a bit of innovation in this space as we go forward. So we're working with banks, so so people like Barclays and NatWest. And I think an important part of how we address the affordability question is through innovative funding and financing models. We do have to sort of confront the UK's obsession with owning stuff. Now, that's not necessarily shared worldwide. So I think we do look at other markets and we look at whether or not we can evolve some of the, the models based on what we've learned in other markets and through partnerships with, as I say, people at banks. But I think watch this space on on the innovation front. And for anyone that is new to what we're talking about here, what would you say or why is it important for homes to be more energy efficient here in 2023 and beyond? And, and what, what are some of the steps that customers can take themselves to help lower those emissions too? So I'll start big picture because I think I think p- for people like me working in, in the industry, I think we can take the climate crisis for granted and we can take what we're doing for granted. So with my leadership team last week, actually, and, and we had a, a guest speaker who was sharing why the climate crisis matters to them. And he shared a stat with me that I hadn't heard before that I thought was was really impactful, which was that there's going to be 1.2 billion climate refugees displaced by 2050. So there's 1.2 billion people that are going to have to leave their home because of what we've done to the planet, which for me, is like a sort of really eye-opening, stark reminder of why we're doing what we're doing and why every you know unit of carbon that we emit actually matters. So that's why I think it's important. What can you do about it? Well, I think that there is an increasing awareness that actually small changes to lifestyle can have quite a big impact. And actually, we shouldn't hold back from making those small changes because you know the climate crisis is such a big thing so you know i would encourage people to think about those sorts of things now that does absolutely include things like retrofitting their homes to improve energy efficiency includes making changes to how we you know the modes of transport that we use etc so it could be as simple as bleeding bleeding radiators or flushing your heating system installing things like the smart thermostats things like hive but equally changing your diet right reducing your meat consumption thinking about you know using public transport as well as the bigger things like changing your heating system moving to things like heat pumps or investing in insulation but I, you know i would encourage people to think quite comprehensively about the steps that, that you can take and again that's where this this home health check comes in which you know we'll absolutely provide advice about the big sort of capital investments that people can make to improve their home but equally will help them understand the small tweaks that they can make to to lower their bills and of course you're working right in the heart of this space you hear big stats like that 1.2 billion climate refugees etc but of course there are going to be armchair critics who'll sit there and say hey it's the big companies causing this problem not me sat in my chair so uh, i'm curious what kind of views are you getting on the public perception of reaching the net zero goal and how is this affecting the way businesses and governments approach it because it, it's such a tricky balance isn't it I guess the research that we've done provides me some encouragement. So when it comes to net zero, we're seeing awareness absolutely start to increase. So in the most recent survey we conducted, the net zero index, we found that when explained, 71% of the public agreed that net zero was the right ambition to have. 
and almost four in five people said that they were willing to make changes in their own homes to help tackle climate change. That cynicism does exist though. So, you know, we found 54% of the public said that they weren't confident that the government would cut emissions sufficiently by 2050. And we we found one in five thought that the UK would never achieve net zero. But, you know, so there is that mix of opinion. What I think is really critical for, for businesses like ours to understand is that whilst awareness is increasing, the depth of understanding is really not there. And it's, you know, it's almost as sort of extreme as to be intimidating. This new technology and this sort of climate agenda, the decarbonization agenda, I think consumers find intimidating. And so it's our job to try and simplify things and to try and, you know, take some of that complexity away to help consumers through this. When we look at the kind of average customer, they don't necessarily know how their thermostat works. And so you start talking to them about micro generation, which is sort of, you know, things like solar. So we, you know, in the industry we'll start talking about things like demand side response, like the public just switch off. And so it's really our job to help clarify, simplify all of this so that we can we can bring people with us. And I'm curious, what impact has the establishment of the new Department for Energy Security and Net Zero? What kind of impact has that had on your work at British Gas Zero too? Yeah, we're definitely encouraged by the establishment of the new department. Achieving net zero by 2050 and ensuring long-term energy security are clearly big multi-departmental challenges for the UK. But I think they also provide great opportunities for the economy. And I think this reflects recognition in the government of that. With the Powering Up Britain report, you know, I think it's pretty clear that the department recognize decarbonizing homes as a priority we were pleased to see the government extend the boiler upgrade scheme to 2028 which i think will really help consumers adopt heat pump technology and decarbonize their home i mentioned the, the great british insulation scheme as well which i think is important uh, but it's not just westminster so you know at british gas we're supporting the welsh government with their next program which which provides advice and funding for energy efficiency measures for low-income households. We're also working really closely with the Scottish government who've got really ambitious net zero targets as well. So across all of this, I always talk about you know, net zero and being a team sport. So I, you know, I don't believe any one organisation, be it public or private sector, have all the answers. And so we're very determined to you know, build coalition of the willing, all focused on that mission of, of helping customers reduce their bills and, and their carbon impact and remain very committed to working with government as part of that. And if we zoom out for a moment, how would you say British Gas Zero is supporting the UK's energy transition as a whole? And and can you share some of the other initiatives or projects that you might be working on now? I appreciate you probably can't share too much, but is there anything you can? Yeah, well, look, just in the theme of kind of collaboration, so, so we've been part of the Sustainable Homes and Buildings Coalition alongside Worcester Bosch and that West which has been focused on a retrofit pilot across England and Wales, which is designed to really identify the problems that are affecting the home retrofit sector, the things which are holding this back. So we've retrofitted nine households across Pontypool, London, Kent, Swansea, Liverpool, and elsewhere, um, at no cost to the householder or the homeowner. And in exchange, all we've asked is that they share their experiences, they share their challenges, and we've been putting together a series of reports, another one to follow later this year, which really articulate some of the challenges consumers face that, yes, industry need to help solve, but equally that require some policy change from the government as well. So so we're working on that through through coalition. Reference the partnership we recently announced with Barclays, which is all about providing energy efficiency solutions to homeowners, which you know, at the moment offers discounted five smart thermostats with with installation as well as EV charger installations. But again, there's a real recognition from the team at Barclays that achieving our ambitions will require some innovation and some flexibility. And so we're looking at how we can work with those sorts of stakeholders to make this easier, you know, for for customers looking to do the right thing. And so yeah, you know, as I say, I think we will continue to try and disrupt the market. We will continue to try and make lots of noise, frankly. You know, so things like the 
warm home promise, the price match guarantee. Lots of that's about maintaining the public dialogue on these new technologies, as well as providing you know, as much reassurance to customers to myth bust some of the sort of negativity that exists in the media that might be holding consumers back. So we we certainly see, you know, committed early adopters leading the charge here. But if we're going to achieve our ambitions, we've got to get into the early majority as soon as possible. And that requires us to continue to to kind of disrupt that that negative public discourse around some of the, the steps that we can take, which I think are being driven by you know, interests looking to preserve the status quo. So you'll see us as a disruptor and doing so in partnership with like-minded organizations in this space. I think that's a powerful moment to end on. But before we do, we've got a big thank you for sharing your insights today. We've got a bit of a tradition on the podcast where I also ask the guests to leave everyone listening with one final gift. And that is a song to add to our Spotify playlist that has inspired you or means something to you, or a book for our Amazon wish list. All I'm going to ask is, what would you like to leave us with and why? So potentially slightly self-incriminating, but my the song I'd like to leave you with is Cheerleader by Omi, which is definitely an important song to me. So I first heard it driving through the Scottish Highlands whilst on holiday with my wife. I must say I take a huge amount of professional encouragement from the cheerleading that she provides me. There's a great book written by Zella King and, and Amanda Scott called Who's in Your Personal Boardroom? And in it, they describe 12 personas that they encourage leaders to, to surround themselves with. So things like sponsor or connector or customer voice. But what I think is missing from their boardroom is your personal cheerleader. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of very grateful to have found mine and I, I'd encourage all of your listeners to actively think about who can play that role for them. Fantastic. Great, man. I'll, I'll get the song added to the Spotify playlist and the book to our Amazon wish list. And so much we covered there in a short amount of time from how technology is supporting a decarbonized future, why it's important to make homes more efficient and use less energy, the public perception of reaching the net zero goal there, and all also the work you're doing at Net Zero Ventures in supporting this transition and even having time to leave us with a great song and book. But just a big thank you for sharing that with me today, Andrew. Thanks a lot for having me, Neil. Cheers. And that wraps up a fantastic conversation with Andrew Middleton there, Managing Director at British Gas Zero. And for me, it has been an incredible insight to learn more about how British Gas Zero is harnessing technology to help combat climate change while also helping reduce household emissions and build towards this decarbonised future and what that might look like. And I think one of the most important takeaways was the crucial topic of making these technologies affordable and accessible to everyone. And understanding that our collective efforts are the only way for the UK to achieve this ambitious goal of net zero emissions by 2050. So a huge thank you to Andrew for joining us today, giving us a glimpse into the promising and sustainable future that they're working towards. But ultimately, every step we take towards making our homes more energy efficient, every emission we cut, brings us closer to that goal. For me, it was all about embracing technology and innovation as powerful tools that we can use in the fight against climate change. But I've kind of tried to summarise our conversation now, but it is all about public perception and your thoughts and what you want to do differently or not. Whatever it is, I welcome your viewpoint here. I want to get all sides of the conversation because only when we all sit down and talk together can we move forward together. So please... Email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. Let's keep this conversation going. But that's it for today. So keep innovating, keep making a difference in whatever way you can. And until next time, don't be a stranger. 